the hands again. Everybody's on Instagram. Who is using Instagram on a daily basis? On a hourly basis. Cool. That's good. No, hourly basis. You say annually? Annually? Good to know. Hopefully, we'll change your mind and your habits today. All right. So I'm just going to minimize this so I can be the other screen. Hello, everyone online. How are you guys doing? Let me present or share my screen so you guys can see this. There we go. Ta-da. All right. So like Darren said, my name is Brandon Lewin. I uh, just was informed this morning that uh, expert is not the best term to use. Um, and if you have a question why, you can ask that young gentleman right there with the vest on who's looking around like he doesn't know who I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna pose a question for everybody, please, or not a question, a challenge. Everyone think of something better than expert or guru to call myself when I'm out here talking to people. Uh, you don't have to think of it right now, but end of class, if you think of something, fantastic, appreciate it, extra bonus, bonus points for that. Um, all right, so we're gonna get started here. Let's see, you guys can kind of see that. I don't know why it's not expanding out. There we go. Okay, so for everyone online, if you have questions, please post them in the question box. Uh, for everyone today, if you have questions, and you wanna ask them, feel free to do that. Uh, if they're not really pressing or something I need to talk to you afterwards, I'll just let you know. But I do like to make these presentations very interactive. Okay, um, so let's just jump right into it. So let me tell you a quick story. Why I, let me just try to move this out of the way though. I don't know why this is deciding to be right here. Um, Trying to do this without moving it. Here we go. We'll just put it up here. Okay. So why I love real estate. Uh, a long time ago, in a land far, far away, I used to be a young whippersnapper. And when I grew up, or when I was younger, I wanted to be a basketball player. But little did I know that I wasn't going to be a basketball player. Um, as much as I, I loved it, uh, it was just wasn't for me. And but my parents though were entrepreneurs. So, uh, and still are. And so they fed me plenty of stuff. My dad actually gave me this book when I was in college. I was like a freshman in college. He gave me the million dollar real estate agent. He thought I'd be a perfect real estate agent um, because of my outgoing personality and some of the jokes I like to tell and people just tend to love me most times. Um, sometimes not, and that's okay. But I also got into reading this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Anyone read these books before? I'm sure you've read that red one plenty of times. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, anybody? Raise of hands. Awesome book. If you haven't read it, you should read it. So uh, I was in college. I started my first business actually in college. And after I got out of doing that for eight months, I decided I was going to go into the field of selling. And so I was looking for something to sell. And my, um, my grandfather was actually in insurance and retirement planning for 30 plus years. So I was like, hey, I'll give it a shot. My dad's a CPA, it was like perfect affinity, uh, synergy. And so I went with this group. And what I realized though, was that like real estate agents, you're left to fend for yourself. You pretty much have to eat everything uh, that you kill. And so I tried for three years, I've tried everything under the sun when I first started off. Uh, I, was, I literally had the mentality of getting in there, the first person in there, last person out but I tried everything from digital signages. Uh, back then it was like 2006, 2005, 2006. So it was starting to be like, you'd see it in like um, barber shops or uh, nail salons, you see these digital signages. And so I tried those, I do print advertisements, I would buy leads, I would do online leads, I would try to call old leads. I did everything you possibly could use, but then I started to use social media. Um, that's when social media started to open up, especially Facebook. So I got into it and a light went off. I was like, oh man, I can use social media to be more effective for what I was doing. And so I started using Facebook to gather people into a group and I started sharing information with them. LinkedIn, I started using as well, but more for a strategic partner relationship because networking was a really strong uh, marketing channel for me. So I cut down my time 
grew my business ex uh, extremely well, and I started sharing people, sharing these ideas with people. Um, and they, it started to take off. That's when I started my first social media marketing agency back in 2008. Um, since then, and even when I first started, I was always working with realtors. I mean, you know, realtors are everywhere. So uh, social media, they always want to be in the new hot trends, as you guys are uh, very aware. And so I was helping them, and I still do. And now, for the last three years, I've been strictly focusing on the real estate industry, helping them. Um, I'm actually in the process, and I say process because it's been a few months, but uh, I'm actually getting my real estate license as well. So I'm going through this to understand. I got it actually back in um, like 11 years ago, 12 years ago, um, when I was much younger, and I never used it. So, and it lapsed, but I love working real real estate agents. So that's a little bit about me and my story and why I love real estate. Now, I always ask this in all of my classes. Has anyone been in my, one of my classes before? Raise your hands. Okay, I know, I know you have time. Um, the biggest thing I always say is that you need to start when you do marketing. This is just from a foundational standpoint, and this really helps with Instagram as well, is that you gotta start with your story. And within your story, you have to really emphasize what your why is. So, um, for people, let me turn this camera around because I'm going to be right in the, the board. So people online, feel free to look at the board. Um, okay. So good. All right. Um, so your why, why is a big part of this? Uh, anyone ever heard of Simon Sinek? No? Okay. So write his name down, Simon. Uh, his last name is Sinek, S-I-N-E-K. He has a book that called, it's called Start With Your Why. You've read it? Okay. I've read it. It's fantastic. If you want the cliff notes in about 18 minutes, just go and watch his TED Talk on YouTube. It's been viewed like hundreds of millions of times. It's pretty much his book in 18 minutes. So if you don't want to read it, feel free. I read it about every... Uh, year or so and I watch the video uh, twice, twice to three times a year. So it's a really powerful book, but it talks about what your why is and why you need to drive with it and why brands and people who start with their why and are really driven by what they do and why they do it, um, those people are people and companies are long lasting, sustainable businesses. Um, like Apple is a good example. TiVo is another good example of what not to do as a why. TiVo was always about recording, but then what TiVo is, I don't even know if TiVo's still around. Anyone know if TiVo's still around? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're not. So, um, and so th that just goes to show when you don't start with why, it can be a bit of a problem. Um, okay, so I'm, I know a lot of people online, I apologize. I know there's probably, uh, you guys are trying to get uh, some technical things, but I can't promise you anything really. So just bear with me on this um, and we're going to fly through it. Pay more attention to what I'm saying and what I'm writing down than about the technical issues and we'll be perfectly fine. Okay. So, um, okay. Let's get into today. So three secrets I'm going to reveal for you today. One, how to be the first in minds of your people. Two, how to spread your message and grow your business. And then three, how to effectively communicate with people to build valuable uh, relationships. So does anyone have, before I get into this, I obviously have talking points and what I'm gonna talk about today. But I always like to discuss questions that people might be, um, that people might be having on their mind, make sure you get the most value out of today. So do you have any specific questions around Instagram? Yes, ma'am. So if you have a personal Instagram account, can you just create a new username and password to have a business Yeah, great question, uh, no. Um, what you can do and what I always suggest, first of all, I always suggest you mix business with pleasure. So, yes. Um, couple reasons and I'll get into why, but um, one, it's social media is social, right? And got to be personal. So still having your personal stuff, like I always post pictures of my kids and, because it's relatable, it makes you human. So it's good to mix that in. Um, I talk about um, earning 
adding value and then earning trust and then asking. Um, and so a lot of times it, what you see with realtors and where they go wrong is that they're always posting, um, find this property, look at this property, this is my property, buy my property, this is my property. Like, okay, great. But then people start to shut you out because that's all you're pushing. So you got to change it up and personal um, is one of those good pieces to really uh, utilize in there. Um, okay, so I, I can't change the screen. Leah, sorry. Um, as far as, I don't know what you mean by the board. If you're talking about this board, I can't really increase the, the size of the picture. Um, I apologize about that. So, all right. Uh, okay. So that's, uh, oh, what you can do with your business though, uh, is actually just transition a, does everyone have a, a personal Instagram? Does everyone know if they have a business one? You know, you have a business one, you have a business one. Okay. So there's a way to actually take your personal one and just turn it into a business one. Um, it's pretty simple. It just, you go into your settings. They ask you, um, if you want to, I can actually show you how to do it after class, probably be the easiest way to do it because I've already transitioned mine. So it's like, I have to show you either by creating a new one or using yours. So we can go do that later after class. So if anyone doesn't have a personal or business one that wants to transition their business into, or the personal into their business, let me know, stay after, and I'll, I'll help you set it up. Um, okay. Any other questions? Good question. So two things, one, you get, um, you get insights, you get analytics to see how many people have like clicked on your post, uh, interacted with your post, how many people have visited your profile, how many people clicked on your like link in your profile. You also get extra settings in your business profile where it says like call or email. So someone on Instagram could go to your profile and just click on message or call and they can contact you directly without having to jump through a bunch of hoops to get there. Um, and so those are the two main reasons. The other one is that you can also advertise um, with a business profile versus a, a personal one. And we don't get into advertising today, but it is an, a good option to have. Yes. And then, like I said, if you, if you haven't done it, I can show you, it takes like a minute to do. So uh, after class, I can quickly show you how to do it. Yes. I have a question about settings. So uh -huh. I use the iPad, mm -hmm. the laptop, and if you go to Facebook, it will give you that um, little icon that says that like that I don't know, but what I do know is that Instagram is a predominant, it is mostly, an, it is pretty much a mobile app. Right. So you, you have to use most of it. I don't even know, yeah, on your phone. I really don't think it translates well even on an iPad. Okay, I was just wondering if it was, did I have the wrong setting? No, it's yeah, okay. you're good. It's Instagram. Yeah, you're safe. <laughs> yeah, blame Instagram, not yourself. Yeah, no post it. Well, what you can do, and I'll show you how you get to do this later, is that you can use the tool to post on your web browser, on your computer. Yes, ma'am. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, you're stuck. So you got to make that decision. But I, I mean, unless you're like, I'm never going to do, I'm going to get out of real estate in the next year or so or not have a business, then yeah, maybe you want to change and just have your a, a business one and keep a personal one. But I always think it's good to have just to transition it. But again, you have to think about like your future and what you plan on doing. So um, any other questions? All right, cool. So let's start off with some basics, all right? Um, because Instagram, and this is, this is a saying, and I'm just gonna come right out and, and start with this, is that we have a 70-30 rule, right? And this is my own rule that I've made up. Um, this is similar to like the 80-20 rule, but this comes to really posting and anything interaction um, or marketing in general. But the 70-30 rule says 70% of the time, you want to add value for your audience. Um, from that opportunity of adding value, you earn the trust to ask for something 30%, the other 30% of the time. 
So simply said, 70% uh, of the time you add value in, in any of your marketing, but like in social media and Instagram, this is applies to it. You add value 30% of the time, then you're asking. Where a lot of times it's like 90, 10 with realtors, where 90% of the time they're asking the other 10%, they're actually adding value or talking about something else. Right. So we'll talk about how you actually go about doing that um, in a second. But that this is a very uh, good rule to follow in all of your marketing uh, communications. Yes, ma'am. What do you mean? So this is what we're talking about today is very much an organic approach and it's um, not advertisement. So it's going to be a long game. It's not going to be overnight. You're going to get leads. Um, but I guarantee if you follow this rule, you will get leads from it. Um, that, is, that is something I guarantee. If you want more immediate leads, that's when you have to pay to play. So that's when you have to start doing advertisements. So that's a whole nother subject because there's a lot more to, to that. Um, did you have a question? So oftentimes you get an option where it says, you want to promote this particular thing. Are you, I think you just answered my question. Mm -hmm. So 70, you're simply saying, if you want to pay for it, it's simply not organic. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Got it. But, yeah. if, but if you do want to pay for it. Yeah. Um, you can't. You can't. Yeah. Can the viewer tell if you pay for it or not? It says sponsored on there. And, and there, it is pretty, um, it's not like, if they know what they're looking at, they know they're looking at an advertisement most of the time. Plus, um, so when you do an advertisement though, that's very much more straightforward. That's like, I have this listing or I'm looking for new clients um, and you're bringing, you're trying to draw them into something. So again, that's a whole nother conversation. And I usually teach another class on Facebook and Instagram marketing or advertising uh, on itself. So uh, story why 70, 30 rule. Um, okay. So let's go back uh, a qu uh, real quickly because another important piece of all this is understanding who your audience is. Um, does anyone have a niche audience? Uh, one's developing. Developers or De develop develop developing. Developing. Yes. What do you mean, like developing, um, like new developments? Until I found out I was bilingual. Uh huh. And uh, ninety percent. Oh, of so you're clients, looking for. Um, the last four transactions, three transactions have been with uh, Hispanics. Okay, so Spanish speaking yes. people. Okay, good. That's a good niche to, and again, like when we talk about niches, you can expand. It doesn't have to be just one niche. It could be like two or three, but really you should not expand beyond three because it's going to be hard to market to, at least for right now. Um, do you have a niche? Uh, first time online. Okay, it's kind of a niche. Um, what, and I'll explain a little bit more what I mean by a niche in a second. I'm sorry? Engineers. Engineers. Perfect example. That's very specific. Okay. Um, engineers is a good one. But niches uh, are very important. And I'll give you an example of why. I know this is like a big brand, but do you guys remember what Amazon was, what they niched, started off when they started? Books. Books. Great. Man, this is like the second class where there's multiple people that actually knew that. Every class before that, like zero people knew what that was. Um, but yeah, our online books, they pretty much ran people out of borders no longer around because they couldn't keep up with Amazon. Um, so niches are important, but they started off very niche and now they pretty much rule the world. Uh, they sell everything. So it's important to have a niche to, um, discuss and to start off with marketing because it's very focused and also, especially for realtors, there's so many of you, right? And everybody knows at least five realtors. Um, you know, I, I obviously have a room full of realtors here. I have friends who are realtors. There's a lot of people and a lot of people know realtors. So the important part is that when you can niche out, they can think of you more specifically right away. If you just tell them I help people buy and sell properties, um, that's great. But when they talk to somebody and someone says, I have a specific need or I'm in a specific situation, they might not think of you. Might, they might think of someone else first. So having a niche really helps to draw that out and to get you across and cut through that noise. So niches, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this, but um, a couple things could, that could be niches is like uh, engineers are a specific one. You could be going after boomers or baby boomers. 
Um, okay, boomers. No, that's, uh, mm -hmm. You guys know what that means? Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> I've had people call me that a couple times. I'm like, I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> no offense if anyone is that wise, though. <laughs> I just want to backtrack and take my foot out of my mouth for a second. Um, <laughs> So uh, boomers, but then they also go after millennials. And the reason why, and this was a great example, is because he was targeting boomers um, who were looking to sell and downsize, but those people actually happen to have, still have adult kids living at home, millennials. So they would help them sell the property, find another smaller property, and then help sell their millennial children their first home or condo or whatever it was. So it's, it was actually a, a, a sub niche of it that worked great. Um, culture or ethnicity is a great way to really hone down on your niche as well. Um, location helps to drive it down as well. If you want to own a certain area, I own, you know, Cedar Park and Leander. Um, that's my niche and I help young families who are first time home buyers. That is a great example of being a lot more specific in your niche. Um, and you, and having like tweaking your niche too, to know like if you're talking to somebody and you are asking them questions, you find out that they're a growing family, they've already owned their home, own home, you could just simply switch that up and say, I actually specialize in helping people in this area who have young families that are growing that are looking to upgrade the property. So being able to pivot pretty quickly like that is really easy to do, just keeping that top of mind though. Um, so having those different um, parts, also like, uh, veterans is another good one. If you're a veteran or you uh, have a family member that's a veteran, um, those are, are, are good niches to have. Uh, I have another person, a uh, friend, client that uh, used to be a teacher. Anyone else used to be a teacher? Nope? Okay. But teachers are great or civil servants. I, I don't know why they call them that, but it sounds weird. But, you know, policemen, fire, or police officers, firefighters, um, veterans, <laughs> teachers, you know, if you say I serve that community, that is a perfect way because they have certain needs that other people don't know about. Um, also, uh, what's another uh, good niche? Uh, disability. So I, I'm at a client who's in New York. She had two kids that were disabled and she didn't realize how much there was until actually purchasing a home of what they needed. And so she actually owns that niche in her area because there's a lot of specific needs that most people, most average realtors wouldn't know um, unless you had some experience in it. So think about some niches and really identify that. That will help you tremendously with your, your, uh, with your marketing. And, and what it will really help with is that 70% of adding value because you want to add value to someone's life. And when I talk, I'm going to jump into the different categories of how you can actually add value to people through content on social media and, and Instagram. And what you can do is as long as you're focusing on your niche, you can, it makes your life a lot easier, okay? So if you're focusing on young families, right, or first time home buyers, you can create a bunch of content directly towards those people. Instead of having to create content for first time home buyers and sellers and, you know, all these different um, avenues that you can really go down. So, uh, I just want to make sure looks like there might be some questions here. Um, okay. So someone says UT le uh, leasing. Um, yes, I can share all this information. Yes. I'll have all this. Okay. Um, uh, okay. I'm getting corrected on how I'm saying realtor. <laughs> Thank you for that though. Um, Okay, so <laughs> it was funny because I said something about that, like, you know, when people say library versus library. Um, never mind. Um, okay, so let's talk about the categories of adding value and content on here. Does anyone need to take a picture of this? Want to take a picture before I wipe this off? Okay, um, I'm going to just wipe this off of here. So when it comes down to content and to creating, couple things you want to do, especially from an adding value standpoint. I call this um, the six categories. Uh, I know I didn't spell that right. Categories um, of content, six content categories. 
And so what you can do, first one is your story, okay? I always say you wanna share your story and you wanna share it on a consistent basis. Um, with Instagram, there's a lot of, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Obviously, uh, you guys ever heard of like uh, TBH, Throwback Thursday? It's a great opportunity to start telling your story. You take a picture, TB, or, oh, TBT, sorry. What was that, what did I say, TB, TBH? Ugh. All right, my mind's working not as quick as I like it to. Um, but TBT, Throwback Thursdays. Okay, so you can use that as an opportunity to pull up an old picture and post it on Instagram and then tell a little bit about your story. And you can do that a lot. Like, obviously, there's a Thursday every week. Um, so you can do that quite a bit and share that. Um, what I say is that you, you're going to have a story, and there's certain places to share the story. Again, today is not really focused on that. Um, and I get into more detail specifically how to do that. But um, when you create your story, understand there's stories within your stories. Okay, so just because you have a story developed that maybe you talk to people about and share, or you have it on your website or internet, uh, or on other places on the internet, there's still stories within your stories that you can create micro pieces of content on your social media, specifically on Instagram. So um, make sure you are sharing your story. Number two, we are going to share your philosophies. So philosophies being, what do you believe in? Um, what you don't believe in. Um, there's a lot of things that other real estate agents, I'm gonna change the word up on everybody because I know they're gonna judge me on my <laughs> way of how I say realtor. Um, so philosophies, uh, you know, every agent has different philosophies. Obviously there's a code of ethics. You all have to go by the laws and what your, your, um, what they say in the fair housing act and all those different, um, codes that you have, but, uh, there are philosophies that you can share, you know, maybe what's your philosophy on buying a new home, who should be buying a new home, um, who should, uh, who should be looking at different ways. Maybe you should wait to buy a new home because you're in a certain situation. What are those philosophies that you believe in that you want to share with others? Number three is success stories. So you can do this in a couple different ways. Anyone comfortable with videos? Okay, I know you are. Um, anyone else comfortable with videos? How many hands? Like, okay, higher. Hold on real quick. I want to see higher. Okay, so in the room, we have about six people out of, I'm going to take a guess, like 20, 25 people, okay? Uh, everyone needs to get comfortable with videos. I don't care what your excuse is, throw it out the window. Um, being in the video or Yes, video? both. Um, yeah, well, it, you don't have to. I mean, you could always, like, show a video of a property and you just kind of talk behind it, and that's a good option. Um, but what I'm talking about specifically is you being in the video talking. Um, that is something, the reason why you want to do that is one, images only go so far, right? And there's only so much you can say in the caption. You're not sure if everyone's going to read it. If you have a lot to say, it's going to take a while. A video, you can get a, a lot across in a short period of time. What about, what is about that period of time? What do you suggest? Uh, so in, on Instagram specifically, because today is, is about Instagram, the video on the post itself is only 60 seconds long. But the nice thing with the video is you can pause and stop. So if you want to make a point and then you stop and you want to walk across, like say you're in a house and you want to walk across to another part of the house, you can then start to record it again. So there's some options of how you actually create the video, but you do have only 60 seconds. There is, anyone have heard of IGTV? Okay, yeah. So it's Instagram TV. Basically, it's its own app, but it, it connects with Instagram itself. Um, you can create videos, I believe, up to like 12 minutes on there. So, but the only thing is that you have to pre-record it. You can't just record it in the app. So you have to record it on your phone and then you upload it to IGTV and then it will automatically create a preview that goes onto your Instagram post. So then when you look, people can watch it and you probably have seen this if you follow other people that use video, but they have a little icon on the bottom that says continue to watch. It'll go for that 60 seconds. Then when it stops, it'll say continue to watch it'll click and then it'll go over to the IGTV and you'll get the full video. So it's another option of creating a longer video. So IGTV yes. is its own app. Is its own app. You can download that. Correct. Oh, that's great. 
it's free. It's just another extension of Instagram is really what it comes down to. Um, you asked the question though, and I do want to answer it. You did ask, uh, the gentleman in the front row asked how long a video should be. And I always say, throw out thinking about how long it should be. Just focus on getting the value across and whatever that message is for that video. So if it takes 30 seconds, 30 seconds it is. If it takes three minutes, then it's three minutes. If it takes three hours, then you better figure out what you need to do to cut that down. Uh, Cause that's really too long. But so I would say, um, but I have videos that are on like YouTube that are 30 minutes, 60 minutes. I have these recordings that we have here that I go on my YouTube page. So if you guys want to follow me, little plug, um, follow me on, on YouTube. You can watch some of these videos. You can also watch this recording when I get up there in a couple days. Um, but these are hour long, you know, sometimes hour and a half. And I actually, the longer videos that I have, the more views I have. I, I have some videos that have 20,000 plus views on them. And that's, and the reason they are is because they're very focused on a specific topic that people are looking for. So, but it takes a while to explain. It's kind of like a how to video. So when you have value like that or message and content to get across, it's okay to go longer. So don't get too focused on the time. Just focus more on what you need to say to get that, that message across. Yes. So I'm sorry, what were you trying to say that? So in Instagram, one of the, uh, my daughter is searching it. So uh -huh. her, uh, she wants to correct mommy. And it's not mommy. Your Instagram is all over the place. It doesn't have a color. It doesn't have the, when you look at all the posts, yeah. it doesn't, uh, it's hot pop. Okay. Um, but how do you do that when you're really only taking pictures? We can talk about that outside. I don't really, so there's going to be a lot difference of what a 13 year old wants to see on Instagram versus what a client wants to see on Instagram. So when a 13 year old starts to give you advice about what your Instagram should be from a business perspective, pull it back a little bit, but like, you know, stay your lane. No, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to be, yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're going to be realtors. Like I even have a, a client who he's a photographer as well as a realtor. And so his posts are, beautiful but i don't expect every single one of you to become photographers overnight and start to make these posts really colorful or beautiful or whatever it is again just focus on the value of adding value to people in your posts and then there's ways you eventually can get to ways to making it look pretty one way you could actually make it and this is good because i was going to bring it up anyway so thank you for bringing this up there's a tool anyone call heard of canva yes. okay so you're gonna go canva.com it's free um, you can create, they have its own Instagram size frame. You can create pictures, images. Um, they even have animated stuff that you can do on there. And that's where you can start making things look a little bit prettier if, you, if that's really a focus. But again, just focus on the value. It does help to have it a little bit more visual appealing. Um, if you were like to say like you were, one of the things you can use from content perspective too is like quotes, right? Like you have a motivational quote or just quotes about maybe you have a personal philosophy that you want to put in there as a quote. Um, you can make it look pretty using Canva. Yes. So two part question about videos. Yes. Um, I have been advised that it's better to do your videos on a platform that you can use in more than one place. Uh huh. So IGTV probably can only put them on Instagram, just like Facebook live only does on Facebook. Yeah. And you can't share it, say, an email or a YouTube or somewhere like that. I mean, what is your opinion on that? So it's a good point. Um, Instagram TV is going to be the way you record it. Typically, you want to have it uh, like this. Like Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah. Just the camera standing up here, facing you, um, vertical versus horizontal. This is like, like if you take a picture and you want to put it on the internet, this is how you hold your camera. Okay. I always tell my wife she's always taking pictures like this. I'm like, hey, turn. <laughs> Um, but, and, but you can also record videos like this. So 
if you want to use it for multiple purposes and you don't want to put in extra time, which is recording two videos, same message, just different sides, then just record it this way and you can still upload it to IGTV. It's just this, the, they're going to look at it. They're going to see black on the top and black on the bottom and they're going to have that screen. The nice thing though, is that if they watch it on IGTV and they click through it to go to that, they just flip their phone and then it fills the screen. So it's not, I mean, you could just keep it this way if you want to, again, if you want to do two videos, because if you want to use it for Facebook and you want to put it on YouTube, you should be recording it like this. Okay. Does that make, does that answer your question? Sort of. Okay. And the other question is, um, there is an option on Instagram to put exactly what you're posting simultaneously onto Facebook. Yes. So you don't have to go. I never say do that. Uh, this was my question. Yeah. I've heard people say, mix it up a little. Don't do it the same Well, same. the reason I say not to do it isn't so much because I think the content translates. Like, really, in all honesty, like, any content you're creating for Instagram, you should be able to use for Facebook and LinkedIn and other social media platforms and even, even emails. Um, but uh, the reason you don't want to do it is that when you write a caption on Instagram, it's different than how you would on Facebook. So Instagram, first of all, caption kind of comes second. Facebook, the caption is almost like first. It's like one of the first things they want you to read. Um, but the caption itself, also how you write on Instagram is a little bit different. To actually separate a post or separate sentences or paragraphs, you actually have to put a period um, in between those paragraphs on Instagram. Um, if you don't know what I mean by that, I would highly suggest you just take a look at my, go to my Instagram, it's uh, Brandon Lewin, and you can see some of the posts and how I have it. But it's like a enter, period, enter, then write the cap, like a sentence, then push enter, period, and then start another sentence. The reason I say that you want to split it up is that with Instagram, um, if you write, like if you have a longer post, let's say it's like five or six sentences, right? Um, it's going to all be in one sent in one paragraph. And the problem with that one paragraph is that people look at that and they get overwhelmed They're like, Oh my God, there's so much information. I don't want to read this or I don't have time. I'll come back to it. And they never come back to it. So, um, by separating that, it's sort of like how you would write a blog post too, is that you want to separate it because it makes it easier on the eyes and psychologically they're like, Oh, this is easier to read. Um, it's the same amount of content. It's just, it's, it's easier to digest. So how are you listed on Instagram, Brandon? Yeah, so here I'll send, I'll, let me just make sure. I have two Instagram pages. So um, it's Brandon M, as in Michael Lewin, on Instagram. Brandon M. Lewin on Instagram. Here, I'll just put it at the top. <clears throat> Brandon, oh, and got it. Okay, and M. Lewin, and you can follow me on there. Um, you can see I'm in my posts. You can also see that I have some stuff on there. I actually just posted this morning a um, a uh, animated picture that I created on Canva for to promote my podcast episode that I had just coming out. So if you have other content like that, that's a, another way to really utilize it. Is using images. Um, yes. Why, why on your Instagram posts, I get the dot or period in between the paragraphs. So how can you put all of those periods in the middle? Yeah. So I, what I do is I drop it down because then we use hashtags. So hashtags on Instagram is another way to be found by more people. So, um, why so many, why are you dropping down? cause I'm trying to separate it from the actual post itself. So normally when you look at it, you're going to click the more parts and then it's going to drop down. Then you'll see the, the message and then you'll see the, the hashtags at the bottom. Um, just, I don't think people really want to see all the hashtags at the top and that's why I do it. Um, yeah. Cause comments, then you, people are like, they go to look at the comments and they're like, why did you put in the comments? So it's just from a, um, design perspective. I like, I like to do that better. As long as you put a period, it will automatically post. Period, and then directly enter, and then it'll drop period. down. Yeah. I've never seen that before. How did you figure that out? Watching other people do it. Really? Yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I follow people on Instagram and, you know, people that are, you know, um, are doing this stuff. And then, so I started to notice a trend, 
and people were doing this. I was like, oh, and then I started to figure it out myself. So yeah. Um, okay. So with that uh, said, let's get back to the categories real quickly. Um, so your story, philosophies, success stories. So success stories, you can actually use, you can either have like an image. Um, obviously you can share a story about someone that you helped. That is fantastic. Obviously um, you have to be careful in what you say, uh, but you also don't have to have their names included. If they give you permission, fantastic. If they don't, you could just use it as a general example of maybe how you help them. Um, I had uh, one client, she, uh, she met this, um, this, this mom and she had a younger daughter and they were looking to buy a house in a specific neighborhood because it was blocks away from the grandmother and they wanted to live by there. And so she actually went around the neighborhood knocking on doors uh, to find a home in that neighborhood to, buy, to, to sell or, or to, to buy for her client. And finally, they, after like months, um, they found somebody and it was a house that was actually, um, it was, uh, it, what is it called? Um, it was in, in um, it was in legal transition from an estate um, and the here's probate. probate, probate. That was the word I was looking for. So it was in probate. And so they had to like deal with that whole situation. But after months of delegations and everything with probate court, they got the home and it was fantastic. And it's it like a really cool story, like going around, knocking on doors, putting in the work and they found a place for this. And that little girl was like eight at the time. She absolutely, she called that real estate agent, her super agent, like her superhero. And so she, and then that little girl, um, actually started referring her business and still to this day refers her bits, refer her teacher to her, refer family friends to her. Uh, it was fantastic. And so that can, that stuff can go a long way. I, I don't even know the names of those people and I didn't disclose any of those names, but that's a great story to share um, on Instagram. And, if, and it doesn't mean you have to have that specific type of story, but if you have stories like that, that is great to share, you can use an image. Another way, and I always suggest this anyway, is to get video testimonials from your clients. All right. So after you're done, corner people, feed them some glasses of booze or wine or whatever, um, and say, please give me a 30 second uh, video of what you loved about the experience of working with. And if they won't do it, then just get them more drunk and then maybe they'll do it. Uh, just uh, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> I, I swear someone's going to take my advice and they're going to have like a, like a success story of like someone really drunk and slurring the words. Like, eh, I love that person. Um, so, but success stories are really powerful. Videos are even more powerful because then you get to see a name or a face to that actual testimonial. Like anyone can write a testimonial, anyone can make up a story about a testimonial, um, but having a person telling that and putting a face um, to that situation is really powerful. So try to get as many success stories and it might take a little time to be able to figure out how you can actually persuade people to do it. Um, but just put in the work, you know, you figure it out. Eventually you'll find some, some things that persuade people to do it. Okay. So number four is, uh, current events. This is a fun one. This one is actually great because these three typically are like original content that you have to create yourself. This one can be predominantly like third party information. So uh, what I mean by current events is economic developments, um, new things happening in the neighborhood, restaurants to visit, um, things that will add value, I, didn't, I took that off, but add value to people's life and to your specific audience. It's one cursive for no reason. Um, so add value, this is the name of the game and this can really do a lot by prov uh, providing this information. Um, you know, the community impact always have information about specific neighborhoods and things are going up. Stuart title actually does a really good job. They share a lot of information about new things that are going up. So you can just steal information from there. Instagram. Um, how you can do this is that although Instagram is image focused, there's a couple ways you can actually share current events. You can either just like screen capture the picture itself and the article and share that and then put your two cents in there and then say, you know, this was the resource, go to this place to, to read more on it. Or you could record a video giving your two cents of why people want to know about this. Um, another thing to piggyback off of this, is everyone here, who's a KW agent? Okay, so a good portion of everybody. Um, 
uh, a buddy of mine who's also a client, uh, Chris Bear, who's out of this office, he does a fantastic job. And I believe he's the only agent who's ever listened to me when I give this piece of advice. Um, and this is something I think all of you should be doing because this will add a tremendous amount of content, but it's the weekly roundup, okay? Weekly roundup. Once a week on a Friday or a Thursday, um, you pull together some information to share with people. He did one a couple of weeks ago. I watch all of them, by the way. Um, but he, every, uh, he, he does some things like um, uh, weekly roundup a couple of weeks ago. He did, oh, Christmas trees. Where to, where to recycle Christmas trees. And so he gave five different locations or four different locations of where you could do that. Simple one minute video. He was able to put it on Facebook and you can also put it on Instagram. I don't think he actually puts it on Instagram, which if Chris is here and if he's not here, uh, he should know that. I know he's not here, but uh, maybe he's online, but I don't think he is, but I'll tell him he needs to put it on Instagram as well. And those are, those are great pieces of content just to put up there as a weekly roundup. Um, he also did one on things to do for the weekend. So because he focuses on family, it's a lot of family orientated stuff. So things like, uh, you know, uh, I forgot there was a couple things. And I remember I got information from him. So I was like, oh man, this is cool. I'm going to take my kids to go see this. Or I was like, man, we're not gonna be able to make it, but this sounds awesome. My kids would love this. And so this is information that again, will provide a tremendous amount of value to your audience. So doing a weekly roundup using current events um, and using third party sources. Education is number five. So this can be, this can be uh, third party information. If you have resources that you could pull educational material, that's good for your audience, or you could just use your own and create your own educational material. And you can again, do like a picture and then a post, or you could do a uh, post and then you could, or you create a blog post or you create a video. I would suggest doing videos if you can for something like this, especially if it's gonna be original. Um, another great way of creating content for educational purposes and not having to create it yourself is leverage your strategic partners. So mortgage lenders, insurance agents, uh, home inspectors, um, uh, appraisers, title companies. You know, uh, you can grab all the painters, you know, depending on who you're going after, there's going to be like your sellers, painters and um, handy people. Those are great people because they can tell you how to like quick little fixes to get your house ready for sale in the springtime. Um, but if you're like more on the buyer side than having lenders, maybe even like credit repair people talking about stuff like that, that could be really helpful. If you get like, just think about it. If you get five strategic partners, which I believe every agent in this room can find, find five strategic partners and ask them to produce one piece of content every month, you'll have five pieces of content right there. And, that, and the beauty of this content is that you can repurpose and use it over and over again. It doesn't have to be just posted once. You can post it multiple times um, using it. So education uh, is a big one and leveraging your strategic partners is big as well. And the last one is personal. So personal is um, things like family, um, could also be uh, things that you do, maybe charitable events or boards that you sit on or activities that you do or hobbies, you know, anyone have a hobby in there? What's your hobby? So I uh, work with Lady Austin. Awesome. Austin is coming in March and the benefits Okay. For everyone online, the young lady in the back with the beautiful shirt said that um, she does helps kids with rodeo, right? Is that correct? All right. And Rodeo Austin is coming up. So make sure and all the proceeds go to. So they go to youth Texas. Okay. So all the proceeds go to youth on Texas. Sorry. I just repeating. So everyone else, all 20 people around here can hear it as well. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What? So that's that's your hobby or that's your charitable event? It's both. both. Okay. So you love doing it. All right. Perfect. Um, anyone else have? I know you like making drinks and cooking, right? And you're good at it. So these are things. These are cool things, though. Like like the rodeo stuff. There's probably plenty of pictures and videos you could come up with. Um, I remember there was another woman in my class who 
was in an Instagram class a few months ago and she was like, I don't know what to talk about. I was like, well, tell me a little bit more about yourself. She's like, I'm on this charitable. Uh, she's on, I'm on this board. I do this, I do that. I love gardening. I ski. I was like, holy crap. I'm like, you are one of the most interesting people that I've talked to in, in quite a while. I'm like, just post all that stuff on there. And you have quite a bit of content with the rodeo that you could post on there. And that's personal and that can go a long way too, especially when it's charitable, people love that stuff. And, and so that's really helpful and you can connect. I mean, all this stuff, the personal side especially, is that people find a commonality. One, it makes you human. Two, they find a commonality. Three, it builds up trust. So this is all stuff that you wanna put out there and that's really helpful. Um, making drinks, you know, people who doesn't like to drink. So, and especially if they can, if you can teach them a really awesome drink to make that's pretty easy to do. I remember, what was the one that you did for the holiday? It was like a, a chocolate martini or no, birthday cake. Yeah, like I still think about that, obviously. Um, <laughs> and I told my wife, but then I was like, and she was like, ooh, that sounds amazing. And she probably would share with all her friends, but I don't know how to make it. And I forgot when you told me. So making a video like that would be fantastic because then you can share and people would love that and then they would comment. Um, another thing that is not kind of personal, I guess you could put it underneath there, is memes, all right? Anyone use, you know, everyone like memes for the most part? They're funny, they're funny or they hit home in some way. Uh, I use, I, ha I manage some clients' um, social media and one of them is actually a bar um, on 6th Street and 90% of what I post on there for their social media posts they are memes. And, and I guess the most interaction, I think 1,000 uh, 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 people that have reached and that was because we had over 50 shares from that post specifically, because once people see a meme, they want to share it, they want to talk about it, they want to comment on it. So it helps to be really interactive. One second, let me just finish my thought on this. Um, so using a meme or something like personal will help to get people interactive and they'll like it. Instagram has now fallen under the same category as Facebook, where there's an algorithm to what people see. So the more they, they like, comment, or share, which they don't really share a whole lot on Instagram, but the more they do that, the more they're gonna see your posts. So when you add in personal stuff or memes that people are liking and commenting, then when you go to add more business related stuff, they're gonna see that a lot more often. So that's why mixing in this stuff is really good and helps um, in really the long run. Yes. Uh, good question. So you, um, I, what I personally do is actually I have a friend who just posts memes all the time on Facebook. So I just grab the picture, save it, to my phone and then I'll just post it on like Instagram. Um, you can follow pages on Instagram or you can follow pages on Facebook. Facebook's a little bit easier to follow pages to get content just because you can actually like, you can go on Facebook and save an image where on Instagram you don't really, you're not able to do that. You can repost it with another app. But that's a whole nother piece that you need to add to it. So what I say is just follow like follow pages that are, you know, meme focused. You can, you can search on Facebook and put in like funny memes or just put in memes and they'll pull up a bunch of information and then you can just save it and share that. Yes. So about sharing on Instagram, we have that little icon that looks like a paper airplane. Mm -hmm. And when you push it, that's how you share, right? Yeah. So that's, that's to share directly to people. Okay. Um, one person. So one person or group, or you can, you can actually share it to a bunch of people and you just have to click their names and share it to everybody. But if you want to like share an actual post, there's an app, there's multiple apps, but one's called like repost and then you just copy the link and then it reposts it for you. I use Matic to make memes. I'm sorry? I use Matic. Yes. That's cool. Okay, Mematic, yeah, so there are actual uh, apps to create your own memes if you want to. Yes? So if you repost it, it depending on what the app is, um, usually if you're not paying for it, it does show that person's handle at the bottom of the picture and just says repost from that person's handle, um, which is fine. Like it's not really that big of a deal. And then you have the option of like adding in the caption that they already created, or you could wipe it out and just put your own. Um, but what I always recommend, if you're going to share someone else's stuff, at least give them a, a quick credit at the end, you know, be like uh, originally posted by uh, 
blank by Brandon Lewin in your, in your caption on your post. Um, so there's that. Okay. Um, okay. So someone asked uh, a good question. I like this Caroline um, online. She asked, if you put your post in your story, it will disappear after 24 hours. Question mark. Correct. So you have stories. You everyone like know what stories are? They're very similar. Facebook has stories. Um, basically what they did is they stole it from Snapchat. They were like, Facebook actually tried to buy Snapchat. Snapchat said no. And then Facebook was like, cool, I'm just going to create my own Snapchat. Um, so that's what they did. And, <laughs> and Instagram has stories. What I like about stories is that um, posts live there, but posts also get bogged down by all the noise that is also on Instagram. So it's good to put that on there. But stories, you see at the top of your screen. So you see up here people's stories. And actually, if you click on someone's story, it just goes through and then they have ads and then there's more, but then it just keeps going through the stories automatically. So you can actually get caught down a rabbit hole of people's stories, but it's pretty effective. Oh, here's my kids doing dances that my wife posted. Um, <laughs> um, but so, you can, and then you, you, what you can do is you can actually share stories. So like I could go right now and do, um, here, let's do something. All right, ready everybody? We're gonna go across the room. Just wave, wave to the camera, ready? Boom, all right. So we created a, a, a post that I'm gonna put on, the, on here on my story, bam, put a, a, a post on there. It does disappear in 24 hours though. It's uh, chronological, um, so it goes by the time that you put it in there, and you and it's literally supposed to be like a story. A lot of people post more often, and I do suggest that's a good place to post information. Um, it's really easy to post videos to it. A lot of times, I will post uh, almost the same video that I posted um, on on Instagram, as long as it's not too long. If it's like that ten minute long video, you're not going to be able to get all of it on your story. Yes. So that's when like, if you post certain things on your, on your page, you can create like a highlight. So like categories, this is a great one. So if you have a lot of, if you start producing a lot of uh, educational material, you could have a highlight on your Instagram of just educational material. Um, if you have, let's say you have a, a, a bunch of listings available, you could put a story on there or on a highlight of just story or just listings on there. So let me, let me jump into, uh, so don't add to post. No, you should add to post. You should mix it up. So you should, okay. So let me talk about this posting wise um, from original post, just posting on Instagram, you should post two times, ready for this, a day. Oh, I know it's so rough. Oh my God, I gotta think of stuff. But guess what? You have all this stuff right here that I just gave you to be able to post two times a day. And a lot of times when you're pulling third party, party content, you can do it. What I suggest is that you start creating content and then get a bunch of content ready and then start doing two times a day. Um, and you can also use a tool called Buffer. It has a free version, which allows you to have three social media accounts on there, Instagram being one of them, and you can post Instagram store or Instagram posts, not stories. So you, you won't be able to do stories, but you'll be able to do regular posts on Instagram. Um, and you can upload videos and images to it and it will automatically go to your Instagram. And then it has a built in schedule. So what I recommend is actually you do it two times a day, 10 AM and 6 PM. There's no scientific data, but just knowing how people interact, 10 a.m. they're at work for about an hour and then they start going on social media because they're bored and then 6 p.m. they're coming home. It's true. Uh, 6 p.m. they come home uh, or they're on their way home and they shouldn't be looking at Instagram but they're in their car looking at Instagram. So um, those are the time frames and you can get those times set up in buffer that when you start posting it automatically goes into a queue and if you pay for a free version of it you only get 10 posts but if you do two times a day, you'd be able to cover five days worth of content. And then you go back in there and schedule another five days. Or you could pay $10 a day and get and post as many as you want. Yeah. 
$10 or ten dollars a month. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. So that's a great question. So um, actually, I say the more you can post, the better. I found that if you post four to six times a day, you can actually really grow an organic following pretty quickly. Um, so more is better, but you have to be able to sustain it. That's the only thing. So usually starting off at two times a day is, is great. That's pretty uh, uh, easily handled. People can handle that more so than saying four times a day. But if you want to, yeah, post more. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Love that question. I was actually going to get into that. Um, before I do that, did you have a question back there? Oh, I just, two times a day, does that include stories or that's just the regular posts? Yeah. Stories, I don't always post stories. Um, I think you need to be able to create a story, but if you have posts, you can actually incorporate that into your story. But that does take manual work that you have to go in and do. So um, the nice thing about scheduling this is that you can actually post, schedule it, and not actually have to check Instagram that day and you'll still have stuff that's going out there and working organically for you. Um, so your question was, I'm sorry, what was your question was hashtags. Okay, uh, does anyone want to take a picture of this? Because I'm gonna wipe, wipe oh, this off. question on Buffer.com. Yeah. Since Instagram is a mobile app, do you recommend Buffer.com would have to be also done? No, it actually works on your mobile, on your uh, computer. computer, yes. Okay. So that's why when we were, you were saying earlier, it's mostly mobile, Buffer actually allows you to do it on your on your desktop or laptop. Okay, um, hashtags, hashtags. So I recommend at least ten hashtags a post. What? At least ten hashtags per post. And how do you pick them? That is a great question. Um, how you pick them is that you want to focus in on your audience, okay? And you also want to think about the post um, this will be recorded or has been recorded so I believe it's been recorded uh, do, do, do. I don't know if it's recorded on here um, I'm not on controls right now so okay <laughs> Darren made sure yes it is recorded so we're, we're all good <laughs> not to try to freak anyone out both online um, or offline so I, you guys will be able to watch the recap of this, but 10 hashtags um, per post. Um, how you find hashtags is that if you go in to make a post, you start typing in hashtag, and then you type in, you can type in like real estate. You can type in, there's a space, each one is, it's hashtag, hashtag and it's hashtag all one word. Space. So it's hashtag start with the word real estate. Yes. Space. Yeah. Yes. After hashtag, you're done with that hashtag. So the only space is between the end of the word and the, after the. And then going on to the next hashtag. Correct. And they don't have to be stacked. They can be next to each other. Correct. Yeah. So uh, you go hashtag real estate or hashtag um, real estate Austin. Um, you could also go specific for a city. Like if you're. This is why I say go back to your niche, right? Go back to your audience and who you're focusing on. Because if you're focusing on Leander, you can go in there and put in hashtag Leander. You can put in hashtag uh, Leander text TX. Um, what you want to look for when you're typing in these hashtags is how many posts people actually have associated with that hashtag. So like hashtag real estate has, has I think, like 21 million posts on there. The more popular a post or a hashtag is, the more you want to include that. Um, but also, you don't want to forget about where you're targeting. Because like Leander, I think, is like, here, I'll, I'll take a look real quick. I think Leander is. So you can go into your search bar on your, uh, on your um, you can go in your search bar, search bar. Um, at the bottom and on Instagram and just go up there and put in hashtag uh, Leander and you'll see Leander has 91.5 posts, thousand posts. Leander Texas, Leander or TX has 32.8 thousand posts. So both of them are relatively large for a local area 
when you type in like Round Rock, you can see Round Rock's like 115,000 posts. Um, so use those. And then a lot of times when you have these 10 hashtags, you will have a lot of these hashtags you'll just use over and over and over again. And that's kind of what you want to do, actually. It's not kind of. That's what you want to do. You want to use as many um, po hashtags consistently so then you're brought up. Because people, a lot of times, they, how they find things or how also Instagram pulls it up is by the hashtags. And sometimes you get brought in, like if you put a, you could put a hashtag on your story, like if you put a post on your Instagram story, you can put a hashtag inside of that and that could be pulled up on Neander Texas story and they'll have its own story. So then you can get in front of newer people. Um, but including these, these are important. So look for location. You can also use like topics too. Like if you're talking about something specifically like a, like a hobby, uh, like rodeo, you put in hashtag rodeo and see what that comes up and use that. Um, that'd be a good one. Yeah. So whenever you're doing the Instagram post and it, you have your post prepared and it asks you to tag people and then it has ad location. Uh -huh. You can put where you are. You can put location in there if you want. Should you put different locations? Is that also spreading your word differently? So it doesn't, so you're not, people aren't going to find you necessarily by location. They, they might because they can search by location, but if it's a popular location, then they can, might find you. Um, so that's not a bad idea, but you, I actually don't put location on there that often. It's not helpful at all. Not really. The yeah. Unless you want people to find you, okay. like where you are currently right. and stalk you. The hashtag is the, I'm one. Sorry. Sorry. the hashtag sorry. is the one that brings those groups of people, right? Yes. Okay. Hashtags is where you're going to get most organic followers from. Um, I grew a, a, a page on Instagram organically to about 800 followers um, by just doing it organically. There is a, a tool that you can purchase um, that will actually help you to do this automatically called um, Gram, this, Gramista.com. And you can pay as, as much as you want, but you get to set it up where you can have uh, them follow certain hashtags, find people find certain hashtags, and it helps you to automatically grow your following by real followers. There are some tools out there that you could buy like 10,000 followers, and they're pretty much all fake bots. Um, so it makes you look like you have a lot of followers, but it's not really engaging in any way. This is good if, if you want to do it. It doesn't always work and doesn't really work that well. I would say try just to focus on the organic side of growing um, because you're kind of forcing people to follow you. They're doing, the bots are doing some tricks to get people to follow you and that doesn't always translate to business. I would say that you'd rather have 100 followers that are actually gonna engage and talk to you than 10,000 that have nothing to do with you or don't know or don't want to know you really. So if you have 87 or 150 followers and then that particular post you got six, so you got six likes. Mm -hmm. How much should you beat yourself up on likes? Don't. Uh, that's where people start to get, like, seriously, like, this is where mental health issues come into play because people are so worried about likes and how much. Don't worry about that. Worry about putting out good content. And then what you can do is gauge maybe at the end of the week, this post did better than this post. And from an analytical standpoint, then you say, I need to do more of that post because it got more likes. But that doesn't always mean it's just because of the content. It could also be the situation, right? It could be like maybe a hashtag or maybe more people were on there. Like the weather sometimes plays a part in it too. Like seriously, uh, from an advertising standpoint, I see um, more leads come through when it's crappy outside than when it's nice because people are on their phone or they're on social media and they're doing stuff. So now, can, I, can I please play the devil's advocate here? Absolutely. Okay. Being of age where I have one foot in the grave, the other one on the banana peel. Mm -hmm. I am wondering, that's a good saying. Uh -huh. is the end game, and I'm having a very tough time believing it, so is the end game for them to say, you know, thank God I'm following that fat guy on Instagram because he buys and sells ranches. It, it, you're, you're saying that somebody somewhere, are they going to reach out to me through, through the Instagram? Like, would you get a mm -hmm. text and say, hey, uh, I've been interested by some land. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. They they can either. Has, has that happened to anybody in here? I closed three months last year. One two. Okay. Good. Wow. I'm just curious. Yeah. I, I just want to know. You know. I'll let... I know it's devil's advocate, and I know uh, 
being of a different generation than people who grew up with social media, it's, it's harder, um, generational wise, it's harder to fathom like whether this actually works or not. Well, I'm not stupid enough to let to ignore it. Yeah, but I, that's I, good. I, I think, you know, I may, you know, you know, I told you I was on the banana field. Uh -huh. Anybody that calls me after this crap, I may die right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Are oh. you freaking kidding me? Yeah. You're going to hear a call, but that could be bad for all of us. Absolutely. <laughs> that would okay. be. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, I was sitting off in bed about what I am not going to say the word, but doing what I am doing. <laughs> that's not my target, by the way. Yes. Um, is there any way we can find out what kind of time you are whose audience you attract, or you just have to try and know? Uh, it's a little bit of trial and error, but you're asking, like, because you're not trying to attract realtors, right? You're trying to attract consumers or engineers. So you could put in hashtag engineers or hashtag Austin engineers, and, and they might be searching for things like that or using terminologies around engineers or what they could be using or whatever you're talking about. But the other thing, and what's the simplest way to think about this from a hashtag perspective is focus on location. Um, like Leander, uh, Austin, Texas, there's variations of Austin, Texas that you can use from a hashtag perspective that will get you in front of people. So, um, you know, if you're thinking a little bit of out of the box, you know, playing around, you could just go in there and start typing things in there and see what pops up. Um, there are some funny hashtags that get a lot of like long followings, like, you know, like uh, um, dogs. dogs, correct. Or like, and this is not really funny, but this is just a saying, it's like um, uh, health is wealth. Like just an example that has like thousands, if not, I think close to millions of posts inside that hashtag. So you just have to start doing that. Also, what's a good thing is that possibly f follow pages that other people in your audience are following and then see what hashtags they might be using. And that's another way of doing it. That was one of my questions. When I go in there, it'll tell me how many posts they have. Uh -huh. um, and that's going to tell me, don't go with the one with 45,000 posts, go with the one with 1,000 so you don't get lost. I mean, how would I get lost? So it's not really lost. It's more like you're going to be, if, it, if your post is more popular, it's going to be higher in the search. Also, if it's more recent, it's going to be higher in the search. So although there's a lot, you are going to get lost, but you're going to get lost in general on Instagram anyhow. Um, what you're doing is you're opening up more opportunities by doing a larger uh, following or larger hashtag or a hashtag that has a larger following. So that's how I see it. Um, I, I've never really posted smaller hashtags and gotten something out of it. I've gotten more from doing the larger ones. I notice when I go with the larger ones that are like 45,000 or something, uh -huh. I will get someone from the UK to start following. Yeah, it's, it's international. Yeah. That's also one of the reasons why I say 10 to 6, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Because if you go beyond the 6 p.m., sometimes even if you go into like 8 p.m. and later, you'll start to draw people in from like Australia or New Zealand because that's when they're, like, they're waking up. Um, so yeah, that's why you gotta be careful also with your posting. Is there any way from Facebook, because I'm looking at it on my father's Instagram, but I only have 250 Instagram. How, how can I get to Facebook? So you can promote your Instagram to people on Facebook. The biggest thing is that people have preferences of where they're spending time on social media. Some people have just Facebook and don't have Instagram. Some people prefer Instagram over Facebook. Um, some people don't have Facebook at all. Like long, younger generations don't have Facebook at all. TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat. That's pretty much where they're spending most of their time. So cross promoting them is good. That doesn't always mean that people are going to translate over there. Um, you could also use email. I always say email is a great platform to communicate with people. You can get a lot more uh, open percentage, but if you want people there, you want people to go to your Instagram, then have them go there. You can promote it with your email. I also suggest is that actually any social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, you want to be able to take them from the social media platform and at least get their email information to be able to put them on an email list because um, email lists you own. Instagram, Facebook, you don't own that. So Facebook has, you've, this happened multiple times where people have woken up and that algorithm has changed. So all the time that people have put in to build up their pages, now they're getting pushed down even further unless you're paying for advertisements. 
you own your email list. You can use your email list if you have a much higher percentage of open and what people will view with the email list than you would with a, a social media post. So just keep that in mind. I know that's a little bit beyond the question that you asked, but I hope that helps. Uh -huh. And then my number goes up and down. But the person who likes stars doesn't like the sky. The person doesn't like the sky. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, you can't really control that. Like I said, is looking at analytics that'll help you kind of understand what your audience likes more of. But that's about all you can do. Um, did you have a question? Yeah, I think I have two questions. Sure. I kind of goes back to having a separate account. Uh huh. Sure. So if I were to convert it into a into a, a business account, I would obviously have to make it private, right? Correct. So if I, I mean, okay, so then if I were to open up a separate account, can you somehow link your friends so that you don't start from scratch with no followers? No. You have to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. okay. You could use your private one and say, hey, for all my business real estate needs, go to the follow this page and promote it that way. Okay. Um, but that's about all you can do. But will they link it? So I know, I mean, obviously, you can have like two Instagram apps, right? So if you toggle between the two accounts, the business and the personal, can you link all your friends and followers that you have on Instagram to kind of like request them to follow your, your business <laughs> one? Again, you can't request them to follow you. I mean, um, I, but you can promote it and just say, hey, follow me. And you can tag yourself. In, or tag your other user or other Instagram account in the post and have them go there. Um, if you do have two, you can also post the same content to two if you want to. Um, they give you the option once you start adding multiple um, accounts to your Instagram app. But I can have one private one public. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. We've got that. Oh, so let's go back because we talked about the value add, but we did not talk about the ask part. And that I, that I believe is a very important piece. Um, so one more thing on hashtags. If you find hashtags and they're good hashtags and they're like local hashtags too, also it's good for finding new content to share. Uh, I didn't spell the name right now. Um, but uh, you can follow hashtags. So you can go in there, if you search for a hashtag and you see it and you click on it, you can actually go in there and follow that hashtag. And that will help you to uh, one, find people in your area. You could always, what I always say is this is a good way of kind of finding new business. Um, you can go in there and start uh, having a conversation with somebody. Maybe it's somebody who shares rodeo um, experience or someone else who likes to make drinks or someone else who just likes to drink drinks. And so you can like comment on one of their posts and, and then start conversations that way. Uh, what I always say that you don't, you want to social media in general, you don't want to just come out and be like, Hey, I'm a realtor. Do you want to buy some real estate? And then they're going to be like, no, or they probably won't answer you at all. Um, you want to add value. So something that you can add for them or maybe share, like if you have a comment, like, like drinks, for example, if someone has a post about another drink, you're like, Oh man, this is great. Thank you so much. Um, I'll share this. Is it okay if I share this with my audience? And they'll be like, yeah, of course. And, um, or you could be like, hey, you know what, since you like this drink, check out my drink that I made, the birthday cake martini. I'm sure you'll love this. And then you could share it with them and then, then you start a conversation. And then you just keep on kind of building from that. Um, then you can get to the point where you start asking, but if they follow you, then they're gonna start seeing some of your real estate posts that you can have on there as well. So that's a good way of starting a conversation. Um, so this is like for Stuart title. And I like this, use this as an example. But perhaps you could create something for your audience um, that you can give maybe at, 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 before they even ready to start using you. So it could be like a, a selling home kit or getting you ready for it. And maybe there's some pamphlets or something from your partners in there. Or from a home buying perspective, there's maybe some information you can share in there or some, you know, tchotchkes that you can include in it. But, you know, you, you, like Stuart Title has this home open house kit. And you could easily, like real estate agents love this, right? Like, have you guys ever used one of these? All right, if you haven't, you should, this is awesome. They have some cool stuff in there. I'm not gonna open up because I don't wanna ruin this. Um, but 
something like that is easy that when you add value to somebody, but hey, listen, if you're ever thinking about selling your house, I got this great kit that'll give you some information and also help you kind of spruce up your house. Um, I'm just like, this is really off the top of the top of my head. So given some time to think about it, I could be a little bit more creative of exactly what you could use. But just for an example purpose, that's a great way of being able to take action without necessarily really promoting yourself or trying to push yourself off to somebody. So by adding value. Um, it, and, and so, um, you know, drink wise, you could also have like your top five drinks as a blog post and you could share it with them. And then they, because actually when you start a, you guys ever heard of, you guys know what DMs are? Direct messages? Slide into people's DMs. Um, <laughs> trying to sound cool, but that didn't work. Um, <laughs> but it, if I go to someone's post, let me just pull up somebody's. Okay. So like um, Interstellar Barbecue, right? Like I follow them because I love barbecue and I love food and I love to drool over stuff that I don't eat all the time. Um, but you can go into message and you send them a direct message. Now inside a direct message, you can do things like add an image. You could, um, you can take a video, you can add a voice note, you can write a text, you can link to a, an actual website. This is stuff that you're not able to do in a regular post. Um, so you can actually do that and have a really good conversation. Um, yeah, I know we've actually run over quite a bit, but I'm a, but thank you. Um, so um, that's a great way. That's why I like keeping an eye on, um, on hashtags and starting to have conversations with people. You can take it from like a, a comment on their post to a direct message and then really start to build up a relationship and share more information with them. And then it, it can uh, blossom from there. Uh, you can also save people's posts on there as well. So you can save a collection. So let's say there are potential prospects or people who also live in Leander and you see a post, you can save it and say, I'm going to come back to this, or I want to remember this person. And then you can come back to them as well. So there's tools on there that you can use. Um, okay. So hashtags, I feel like I was going somewhere else with all of this. Um, oh, at, at, ask. So when you go to ask, this is where you do it 30% of the time and asks, can be anything from listings to joining a mailing list um, to attending an open house. Anything that's going to promote your business or even referrals. So you can act, you have all these asks and you can start to do it. There, there are some like a referral ask you can kind of have as like a canned message sometimes, um, but you can use that on a more of a consistent basis, kind of like templated, and you can change it. Listings, you can have it as well. Um, but what I do suggest when you do this is that you do it in, a, in the right way. Share a story of some sort. You know, like um, I started working with this person or this, uh, this person, um, you know, was interested in buying a house but never actually got into it, but their family, uh, their, their brother actually uh, got in the market and they referred them over, they had a very interesting situation and I was able to help them by doing X, Y, and Z. So if you ever have somebody that you know that would like to uh, work with a, a fantastic agent that will work as hard as they can to get you and, and your family the right property, then please have them contact me. So it's tasteful. It's not just like straight out, but like, got a referral for me? Send me a referral. Um, it, it actually builds a story kind of into it. And I would say tell posts, make posts uh, more story formatted um, than just straight facts. Facts tell, stories sell. So as much as you can include a story into your post, do that. Um, so those are the ask. A uh, couple things on the ask that I always suggest is that don't just um, have them call you or contact me. Hey, don't, you know, contact me if you have a referral. That's great, but have them actually start that conversation by having them send you a direct message. Because they're already on Instagram, they will just come and they're already there, so might as well just have them start that conversation inside there. It's less work for them. Okay. Uh, I understand, and I wanna be conscious of people's time. Um, 
Do you guys have any specific questions before we wrap things up? You mentioned something about the hashtags being at the bottom versus at the top. Yes, from when you when you make a post. And how do you do that? You just keep pushing. Just yeah, so follow follow me on Instagram, and then you can look at my posts and you can see how I structure it. And then what I do is I put periods that kind of like separate. Okay, yeah. yeah. Any other questions online, offline? No, great. First of all, uh, thank you Stuart Title and Darren for having me come through into this class. Uh, I wanna thank all of you and everyone online for doing this and for putting up with my humor. I swear if some of my jokes were bad or they seemed kind of like very forward, I don't mean anything by it. So <laughs> don't take it the wrong way. Um, it's all in fun and games. But I appreciate all of you if you want to, um, what I have is, oh, here's a question. Um, how can I tell the difference between a post and a story? Um, so I, I know this, Tanya, so the, the main thing is that a post is um, in your actual feed. So when you go to your Instagram post, you'll see a post like this, um, and it'll just be a regular post where the story is on the top of your Instagram. So that's really the difference between a story and a post. Are you saying to do both? Yes, if you can, do the both. Same. They can be the same, yes. Another question. Yes. I started doing this and I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'd like to know if it's hurting me somehow. Sure. So you know, you can go to your previous post and you have all of them there. Uh -huh. And then you can share them to your story, that post. You can. So what I've been doing is, I'll have, let's just say I have open house uh -huh. as a post. Yes. So I'll wait like 10 days where that open house post kind of goes stale. Uh -huh. And I make it my story to kind of refresh. Perfect. Is that a good thing? That is a great thing. Doesn't you could also do is share, put your post up, share it in your story, say go check out my new post, okay. and do that as well to promote it. But you can always reuse your post as stories. Yeah. That's great. Good job. High five. All right, um, so I have, I kind of plugged this earlier, but I have a podcast called The Brandon Lewis Show. Go on there. I talk all about real estate marketing. I have some guests that come on there that are agents who have done really good. Um, and also I just share tips. Like I just, I did last week, I did a Stuart Title LinkedIn uh, presentation. So right after I was inspired, so I did a post real quick, talk about LinkedIn for realtors and how you can use it. It's obviously audio, so there's only so much you can get from it but it helps and I do have some on there on Instagram. If I don't, I'm gonna look through, if I don't already have an Instagram one, I'll do another one. I probably will just do another one anyway. Um, but you can subscribe anywhere on the podcast um, and check that out. Um, what else, what else? Oh, if you guys want more information about how I might be able to help you, if you have more questions, this is my contact information. You can follow me on Instagram, I highly recommend it. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook. I put very similar stuff on there as well. Um, my email's on there. You can call or text me. 